um, back in my day when I was in school, they told us we had to learn how to do math because we wouldn't have a calculator in our pockets. Well, guess what? We do. Everybody does. But the fact is, we literally have all the information just at the touch of a button, but often we just don't take the time to do it. So I want to share a couple of things with you today. And um, we want to go through, uh, I, I want to give you, uh, if, if you will, a uh, 10,000 foot view uh, of, of money, how it works for you, how you can make it work for it and why we are the way we are and some background to that. Um, you know, we want to discuss the processes of um, why, we're, why we're kind of built to be consumers and we treat our lives and our money as consumers. That's literally what we do. And, and, and I want to go through that for a little bit. Um, the first thing, first thing that we really need to talk about is why we are consumers. And the fact of the matter is, and I'll just give you a brief history. Uh, we were originally uh, with the Industrial Revolution. Um, it goes back to us being trained for a 40 hour work week. We were trained for 40 hour work week. And because of that being the case, the school system was set up that way. The school system, school system and our public school system is set up where you go into a classroom, somebody tells you when to eat, somebody tells you you have a schedule, you have to get permission to go to the restroom, you go from class to class, you have appointments, and you have that on a regimented, on a five day schedule, and it trains us to be employees on a 40 hour work week. That's what we were trained. The school system was set up that way, and it worked great at the time because at that time, we were at war and we were in the middle of the end. And before that, we were in the middle of industrial revolution. We needed employees. We needed specialized people to do things. So we needed a workforce. So it worked perfectly. We filled the workforce and we had people trained to actually work that 40 hour work week. And back then we made money to survive and we set up retirement and pension and things of that nature because the way the economic system was set up in that time in the United States, you could work 20 years and you could actually live off of that retirement. You could live off of that pension. You could live off of that retirement. You understand? That's the reason why that was set up that way. At that time, in addition to that, and I'm going to speak to this while we're actually at this juncture, um, the Social Security system, it originally was to be a step gap. And, and everybody knows somebody like this before you get on Medicare. And when you retire, it was supposed to be a stop gap. It was not supposed to be retirement. It was just supposed to supplement the pension or the retirement that you got from working, just like rail uh, dock workers and the railroad system. And those people have an ingrained retirement. That's what it was so supposed to be to actually cover the difference between what you were making when you were working, because that's going to drop once you retire and what you need to live. So it wasn't to accentuate your living situation. It was to keep you at the same level. Well, fast forward really quickly. That's not where we are today. Uh, the ec uh, our economy, our system, goods and services completely has changed. The average American nowadays at least goes through four or five careers. Um, some, st some studies say eight careers before they retire. So we don't have the pension. We don't have all of that. So I wanted to give you that background to let you know that typically the way that our parents and grandparents saved money and used money, those same processes don't work today. So with that being said, we have to use different processes for today. We have to use different processes and we have to use different systems for today to actually get what we want. Um, now, I'm going to make a very, very strong statement. And I want you to hear me very, very clearly. T 
today, and I know this is going to ruffle some feathers, but saving money will guarantee that you lose money. Investing money will actually guarantee that you have a pathway to having what you want in life presently and in the future. Again, saving money is the quickest way to get to go to the poor house. Investing money, and I'm not talking in a particular place, just investing, whether you own your own business, however that works, investing money is the only way to guarantee your financial security. It is the only way. And let me just give you a simple scenario why that's the case. If you save money, the US American dollar consistently loses value ever since they separated it from the gold standard. Ever since they separated it from the gold standard, it has consistently lost value. And the problem with that, it goes up and down. Yes, it does. But if you look at it on a long haul, it consistently loses value. And you look it up, people will say, no, it's not losing value. But here's the problem. Inflation increases. Cost of living increases. So that makes your dollar pay for less. Therefore, it loses value. So if you take a dollar and put it in a shoebox and 10 years from now, that dollar can't buy what it bought now. So you literally have lost value. Saving money gets you nowhere. Now, it did back then, but it won't now. So what do we do if if saving won't get us where we want to go? Investing is the only option. Where do we go from there? Well, here's what a lot of people have known for a long time, and this is what they have been using, investing money. There's a lot of ways, and I know investing, the word itself scares people because they're like, the stock market's all over the place. I don't know what, uh, uh, I don't know what the stock market's gonna do. The housing market crashed, 2008 happened. I lost half of my 401k. Well, investing money is not just the stock market. Oftentimes, some of the questions I get, I don't know enough about investing. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to invest in. I don't know how to plan for that. Well, there are so many different options. I'm going to share some of those with you. But now that we're at that point that we understand that saving is not going to help us, saving is not going to help us. We need to invest for now and the future. I will put in this caveat. I encourage all of my clients that you need to have six months worth of your bills in savings, whatever those bills are. And I'm talking about debt. I'm talking about credit card payments, house payments, food, gas, every single thing that you can think of, cell phone bill, the baby's cleats, um, whatever it is. If Johnny likes to swing on the monkey bars and he gets a tooth knocked out every six months, put that needs to be in there too. Tires, the whole nine. You need to have six months in savings before you invest, before you start to invest, because that's going to be your emergency fund. That's the first thing you need to do. The second thing that you need to do is you need to protect you, your family, and your future against any emergency that will take away your income earning potential. That's the second thing you need to do. Income earning potential. That means if you were to get in an accident, you were laid up for a year and a half then you're not earning the money that you were earning before. You need to have something in place that will actually carry your family through that period. You need to have something in place that will still pay the bills. Those things exist. I, I, and I know that there are some people who's like, what? Is that, uh, is that the company with the duck? Not necessarily. There's a lot of different ways that you can do that. As my grandfather would say, you can skin a cat a whole different way. There's no cats that were harmed in the making of this video, just saying. But there's a lot of different ways that you can do that. And more importantly, after you take care of that, and I, we're going to talk about that, the third thing that you need to do is you need to have a set it and forget it investment strategy. A set it and forget it investment strategy where you're going to commit 
to actually investing this amount, knowing that you're going to get this amount of return and it's you can project that when you get ready to retire, it's going to pay out a set amount, whatever your number is. Everybody's number is different. I mean, some people, they want to live, you know, they just want to build a 4,000 square foot house in Arkansas and that's all they want. They want some land in Montana so they can hunt. And then some people, they want to live in Dubai. Well, those retirement plans are going to be a little bit different. Whatever yours is, that needs to actually be plotted out and you need to reverse engineer that back. Now, before we dig into all of those, and I'm going to give you a high level overview of what that looks like. And each, uh, each pathway is going to de be determined by what you're comfortable with. Before we get into all of those, I, I want to let you know that I'm actually sending Sunday uh, my notes on this. There are also some other PDFs that I'm sending her. So if you would like that information, if you're not taking notes now, if you're not taking notes now, and if you're literally, um, if, if you're literally not taking notes now, and if you actually want those PDFs, just contact Sunday. She will get those to you. And that's, uh, you can get all of that information. Um, now, the first thing is the six months, the six months expenses. And there's a sheet that you can actually print out and you can write all of your expenses. You can write them down and you can come up with a sum total. Now, this is what I suggest is that you actually as much as you possibly can where it's comfortable because saving money, getting that six months, it's going to be tough. There's some things you're going to have to cut out. You may have to cut out the Starbucks. You may have to cut out the lattes. You may have to uh, take the vacation money and put it in there, but you need to get there as quickly as possible. Now, I will say this <coughs> for, excuse me, for some people, is saving from a consistent income. For some people like yourselves, you could be your own business owner. Well, you could save quicker if you ramp up the amount of money you make. I love a quote by Warren Buffett. He says, your problem is not that you have, that you don't have enough money. The problem is, the problem is not that you're spending too much money. The problem is that you don't make enough money. You can actually increase your income, and especially if you have your own business, no matter what it is, you just increase the amount of clients that you have, increase the amount of business that you have, make a concerted effort, set that goal, set it, reverse engineer it back to what you need. All you need to do is, I, I think it was, um, uh, we were talking about Russell Branson. I think it was Russell Branson actually uh, said it and quoted from somebody else. All you need to do is figure out how to make $1 a day. And then if you make $1 a day, you do it one time, all you got to do is do that 10 times a day and you made $10. All you have to do is just multiply what you already do to be successful. And then once you have your number, your six months, worth of bills, then you're actually on your way. Once you settle that and get that in, then the next step that we're going to go to is you have to protect your family. Now, I'm going to go through this really quickly because I want you guys to understand this. And this is one of the things that's that's really important to me that a lot of people, they haven't taken the time to learn. And pardon me, my screen just timed out. So I'm pulling it back up again. Oftentimes, People don't know about, and I'm going to use life insurance. People see life insurance and there's five kinds of life insurance, but I'm only going to talk about four kinds today really quickly. There's whole life insurance, there's term life insurance, universal life insurance, and there's uh, a specialized life insurance, such as group, key man, that type of life insurance. Um, oftentimes people, when you say life insurance, they think death insurance, but I've said it many of times, you can purchase death insurance. That's for the people that you leave behind when you die. But most people need life insurance. 
You ask, what is life insurance and how is that different? Life insurance benefits you during your lifetime. Walt Disney would not, Walt Disney World would not exist if it was not for a universal life plan. Walt Disney ran out of money making, I think it was Cinderella. He ran out of money. He had not made Disney World yet. His plans was to take the money from Cinderella and start working on the theme park. He ran out of money. He took money out of his universal life insurance to complete the movie. And it was a success. And then he built Disney World. Disney would not exist if it wasn't for a life insurance plan. And there are stories all over the place like that. One of the things that um, Amazon, same story. There's uh, um, Elon Musk did similar things when he was creating uh, the takeoff from PayPal. Similar things. There's toys all over the place. And they did not necessarily take from a whole life plan. And let me explain the difference. A whole life plan is a life insurance plan that goes for your whole entire life. Um, generally, um, I will dispel this rumor. You do not ever want to borrow from a whole life plan. It is simply what we just talked about. Life insurance, death insurance is simply death insurance. I hate to use those morbid terms, but it is. It's simply to pay for your final expenses. That's what it's meant for, nothing else. It's not meant to borrow off of. It does not accumulate cash value in any significant way. It does, but you never want to tap into it because it will cancel out the policy. Anybody who tells you different, they're setting you up for a problem. Um, now, term insurance is exactly what it says, term. It terminates. It's over a period of time, a term of time. That's what it does. Typically with term insurance, you can buy a larger face amount and it'll cover you for a particular uh, period of time. It works great for people who have small children, children who still have to go to college, people that have still at least 10 years left on their mortgage, people that have a lot of debt. It works fantastic for business owners because you can ensure that your business will continue and has the cash flow to continue if something happens to you. Um, it's great. Me personally, I advise people to have a whole life and a term. Um, the third kind is universal life. Universal life is a blend of the two. And I personally believe that every entrepreneur, every business owner needs to have one of these. And one of the ones that I think is fantastic is a fixed index universal life. And I put some information in that PDF to talk about that. If we get time, we'll go back and dig in that a little bit. Um, the, the fourth kind of specialized life insurance, which is like key man insurance, which is when you have uh, 10 to 20 or 30 or more employees, there's a particular person that you have that operates in the business. And if something happens to them, then the business will struggle. Guess what? You need to insure them. The business needs to insure them. It's a tax write off. It is a benefit to the business and you have the salary to actually pay and headhunt for somebody to replace them if something somebody happens. This is a policy that almost every major CEO has. Um, the company actually pays for it. Almost every is part of just about every single business package. That's the second thing that you need to do. First, we need to get that six month. Secondly, we need to protect if something should happen to you, if you cannot make income and life insurance actually does that, you have life insurance plans that will actually pay living benefits, such as if something happens to you, they will actually pay you a, an amount every single month. This is from life insurance. There's critical illness. If you get diagnosed with a critical illness, they will pay you a certain amount each month and you won't have to pay your policy. There are life insurance plans that will cover a multitude of things. There's plans that will cover your mortgage. Those are whole mortgage protection plans. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, a business owner that is actually protecting their business and their family sets themselves up because the fact the the one thing you can guarantee about life is that there's going to be change. It's going to change. If it's great now 
And you know what? You're living on the top of the mountain. I promise there's a valley coming up. If you're in the valley, I promise there's a mountaintop coming up. Life is going to change. And it's not about avoiding the storms of life and the storms of entrepreneurship, not about avoiding the storms of business. It's about learning how to surf the waves. I'm going to say that again. It's not about avoiding the storms. It's about learning how to surf the waves and protecting your business and protecting your family and keeping yourself on track with the six month worth of expenses is the surfboard you need to properly surf the waves that come along because they're coming. The third part is investing. And I want to dig into this a little bit. I'm, I'm kind of watching my time. I, I, I want to dig into the list, this a little bit because oftentimes, and I'm going to talk about some things that are popular right now and what you need to watch out for and what you need to look for. Um, the uh, investment aspect that you need to look for, it benefits you in a lot of different ways. One, you need to grow your money at the rate of inflation. That's the first thing. Your money needs to outpace the rate of inflation. Rate of inflation averages anywhere from five to seven percent. So your money needs to be doing better than that. Let's check. The average CD right now is paying 2.3 percent. That's not the rate of inflation. The average savings account is paying 0.02 percent. That's not the rate of inflation. So, Gerald, if money market accounts aren't paying, if CDs aren't paying, if if well, you know, I, where should I go? Well, some money markets are, but let me ask you this question. What's your risk tolerance? Are you willing to risk? Are you at that 25 year old place where, you know what, if you lost everything, you got 10 years or 15 years to build it back up? Or are you looking at about 45 or 50? And you're like, man, I can't afford to lose anything. I need everything to work at this point. It's about your risk tolerance, money market accounts, some of them pay anywhere from 11 to 13 to 15%, but they also lose money. In addition to that, you have to pay taxes. They're not tax deferred. So let's talk about the things that are important when you're investing. One, you don't want to have to pay taxes on the money you make. That's the first thing. And there's ways to do that. Because you're not, you're trying to increase, like we talked about before, we're trying to increase your income. So you don't want to pay taxes on the money that you're making in your investment. You want to pay taxes when your tax liability or your tax bracket is at its least. That your money is in assets and not in cash. So literally, you want to do that when you retire. So we want to do tax deferred. Well, that kicks out money market accounts because you're going to have to pay taxes. CDs, you're going to have to pay taxes on that growth, whether it's a uh, six month or 12 month. So that's not really conducive unless you want your tax bill to go up. Doesn't sound like a plan. We need to find something where we're not going to pay taxes and we outpace infl inflation. Well, here where that lies. Oftentimes, um, oftentimes people come to me because right now, uh, NFTs, non, uh, uh, non fungible tokens, they're not being taxed right now. And if you don't know what an NFT, it's literally an assigned value of something that has been created and it's now for sale. So, uh, catalogs, music catalogs. Some people are doing art. They're all over the place right now. Um, and I will tell you, is it bad? Absolutely not. It's it's not regulated. I personally am not a fan of anything that's not regulated because eventually you and I both know Uncle Sam is going to find a way to regulate it and get some tax money off of it. So that's probably not where you want to play with your initial investment. Um, Bitcoin. I know somebody's going to ask about Bitcoin. People are wondering about Bitcoin. Again, not regulated. Is there money to be made? Yes. It's money to be made by people who are very well versed and very well intelligent about that. And that is a such a 
just a minuscule amount of the people that are on the planet that have time to study it. Have I invested in Bitcoin? I did when no one knew about it. I made my money and left. That's what a lot of people do. But I would not say that's not where you want to start. You want to start somewhere where your money is concrete. It's going to make a guaranteed percentage that you can leave it there, set it and forget it. Remember when we said that your first investment needs to be a guaranteed investment that's going to make money no matter what, no matter what the market does, no matter who's president, no matter what the economy does, no matter what the housing market does, it's going to make money. So with that being said, index funds are fantastic for that. Uh, one of uh, one of my favorite companies that I am just incredibly in love with their offerings right now is uh, F and G Fidelity and Guarantee. And there's a lot of different companies that have fixed index universal life funds or fixed index funds. And you do not want variable. Anytime you see variable, that means the rate that you get can vary. Now, let me tell you long term what that means. A fixed index, a fixed index fund does this. It actually paces the market, but you have a guarantee of a floor. And what I mean by that is basically the company is telling you, look, if the market tanks, I'm going to guarantee that I'm going to pay you 1% interest. If the market goes up, I'm going to pay you every bit of interest that the market goes up, up to a cap of 15%, 13%, 17%. Some have caps, some don't. Some have participation caps, some don't. Um, you need to sit down with a professional to find out what works best for you. But um, in its simplest way, when the market is diving in 2008 and I had clients that had fixed index account, while everyone was losing their half of their 401k, my clients did not lose a dime. The clients that were in that type of fund, they didn't lose a dime. And that needs to be your first investment doesn't necessarily have to be a fixed index, but it needs to be something like that. <coughs> Pardon me. The reason why that's important is because one, remember we talked about earlier protecting your family with a policy that's a home mortgage protection, a living benefits, life insurance policy with all of that. Guess what? Your policy may pay out when something happens and you're not making income. But in addition to that, if you have a fixed index or a uh, an annuity or something of that nature set up. Here's the difference with your 401k. You have to be 59 and a half to actually access it and not take a beating with taxes and penalties with a fixed index account. You can access your money whenever you want it, however you want it. You don't have to take a hardship clause. They don't need an explanation. They just need the last four of your social is your money as a commercial say is my money and I want it now. That's how that works. You need that because I and I'm going to say this two times so you can hear me. Rich people have money. Wealthy people have options. No one really wants money in the world. Understand me. You don't. You, you may say I want money. I need money. You don't really want money. What you want is freedom and options. Because if you can have freedom and options and never have another dollar in your pocket, but you can go do what you want to do, get what you want to get, stay where you want to stay, leave how you want to leave and come when you want to come, drive what you want to drive and live where you want to live without having to pay for it. You take that every day. So it's not really money that you want. It's freedom and options. And that's what this type of plan does. Now that you've established that and you've established that set investment, that's going to generate interest from you, compounding interest. And that's the eighth wonder of the world, I believe. Every single, uh, every single of, the, uh, of the 13 wealthiest families that started this country, they built it off compounding interest. Every single one of them, every 
one of them have used the wonder of that. You wonder why we have these billionaires? It's because compounded interest. They don't have a secret that you don't have. They just use compounding interest. That's what works. You need that stable, that stability, that ATM every single month, every single week, no matter what happens. Remember we talked about surfboard, surfing life. This gives you a stable surfboard no matter what comes. You've got two and three protections because you have the emergency fund. You have the insurance policies. You have the term. You have the whole. You have the mortgage protection. You have all of those things that will pay out whatever comes that way. In addition to that, you have a money. You have a bank that is printing money with your face on it every single month at a steady rate of interest no matter what happens. Then from that interest, and when you have that interest, you can actually use that interest to go find out what Bitcoin is about. You can use that interest to go buy real estate and start that uh, Airbnb business, go wholesale real estate, go add people to your business, go hire a staff. You can actually invest in some property. You can invest into some other things. That's what that is, because guess what? That's not your principal. And if that investment does not work out, what did you lose? Your money is still making money every single month. You lost nothing. You lost free money that your investment has printed. And that's how that works. That's how that's set up. Because believe it or not, and I'm going to give you some stats real quick, that, that's heartbreaking. Um, the stats as, as of now, um, 54% of Americans literally have less than $500 in the bank in savings, less than 500. That's stunning. That's stunning. Mm -hmm. And that's the, that's the low end of the curve. I've seen stats as high as 74, less than 500. And we have the ability to do that with the changes in the laws. We can set ourselves up to have all three of those things in place so that, remember when we talked in the beginning, we figure out what we need to continue our lives when we retire. And once we have that number, then we can decide in that last investment, in that fixed index investment, where we're getting the same return or better every single month, we can figure out how many years we need to put into that fund, how many months we need to put into that fund so that when we decide to retire, guess what? That money's there. Not only is it there, but there's a sweet thing that happens with these types of funds. There's something called an RMD, which is required minimum distribution. Once you hit a particular, once you hit a particular amount or a certain percentage, the IRS requires you to take out so much. The company will send you a check, literally a check every single month. You have to spend some of your money. Now it's tax deferred. They won't tax you on all of the interest. They only tax you on the check that you've gotten. And guess what? You're no longer in the high tax bracket because you're retired. You're not earning the money that you used to earn. So you're in a different tax bracket, a lower tax bracket. So you keep more of your money. It is beautiful. And when you pass away, that bank still has your name on it. You have a beneficiary. And they have the choice to either liquidate all the funds in there or they can continue that bank going for them your grandchildren, your great grandchildren, and that interest will continue to build long after you're not putting any money in there. It is amazing and beautiful. And then you can do everything that you would like to do. Here's the thing that I want to put. Um, and Lord knows I, I literally could, I, I'm passionate about this and I could literally do a four hour class. I actually did a 10 part series on it, but this is what I want to tell you. <clears throat> Pardon me. I'm going to give you some actionable Intel. This is what you need to do. 
Okay. And I'm right at 40 minutes, so I can actually give you these things to do. One, you need to decide now, because this is not something, this is where people make the mistake. People come to me when they're 65 years old or 60 years old and say, I'm about to retire in five years and I don't have enough in my retirement account. What can I do? You need time for compound interest to work. You need time. So today is the day. Now is the time. You need to sit down and make that plan. I, I literally, there's some things that I won't come off of. I've actually been the wide gamut of my life. I've made a lot of money. I've made a little bit of money. I've been building different businesses along my life. And there's been times where I did not have, um, I didn't even have, even have anywhere to sleep. Um, there's been times where I've lost everything, but I had children. Their money went to them no matter what. And, and when I say went to them, what I mean is it went to that fixed index account. Because of that, today, this year, my daughter's getting married. I don't have to pull any money out of my pocket because it's coming out of her account. That's hers. It was always hers. Nobody else gets any of that. That's hers. That will be her wedding gift. And that will pay her her whole entire life. When she has kids and her kids get married, guess what? She can pay for that wedding out of that money because it's getting 13% interest every single month. And she'll never have to put a dime in it. This is what I'm talking about. This is generational wealth people, one-on-one -on -one building. That's what's so important. It, you have to have time and you have to do it now. You cannot wait. You can't spend the money on a vacation. You can't spend the money on the stuff, the shoes, the car, the purse, whatever. You have got to do it now because when you get 60, it's over. You get 65, it's too late. So you need to figure out how much you need on a monthly basis to maintain your life. And then you can get in contact with me. Uh, there's some, uh, there's some, um, there's some information on the PDF. There are, uh, there actually, nowadays we have so much technology, they even have robo advisors where you can do it on your phone. Literally, you can do it on your phone. F&G has one, Goldman Sachs has one. Um, it's called Marcus.com. I'll send that. It's actually in um, the PDFs. There's one with, uh, there's literally one with Vanguard. I love Vanguard funds. They have a digital advisor. It requires $3,000 to enroll, but, and they only charge about $4.50 per $3,000. Marcus.com is with Goldman Sachs, the 0.35 advisory fee. And you only have to have $1,000 to open it. And you can actually manage it from your phone. Now, here's the beautiful part. They will give you the advice of where it needs to go. Excuse me. Um, they have low cost stock, low cost bond EFTs, uh, electronic uh, transfers. Uh, they have low bond uh, EFTs. They have tons of things. Now, if you like a lot of people that I come in contact with, they want someone to sit down with them and actually articulate that. Uh, we have a team of 28 uh, 2,800 agents around the country uh, that do that do similarly what I do. I love what I do. I love helping people. We don't have any fees. Um, you can ask Sunday. She's never sent me a check. She's never sent me. Uh, she's never sent me a uh, cash app or anything or Venmo. We do what we do and we do it at high quality. Um, but literally, you need to do those three things. And once you do that, the savings account, you do the life insurance, protect your family, and then you do the investments. You're setting yourself up for a future that's powerful and your dreams will literally come to fruition. I promise you that. And 
You have my contact information. If you have any questions, I never charge for any questions. I just want Americans to stop living up under the auspices in the jail of poverty and they can actually live in freedom. Thank you so much. I love it, Gerald. That was really a great uh, information that you provided. And, you know, I think for me, you know, that's this is not my superpower. I am a spender. Really, have been working to be an investor and being, uh, and then also a person who wants to protect their family and and leave a legacy for my family. So working with you has been really easy to do that because I get to leverage your superpower, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> That's what I've learned. I think over the years is how do I leverage other people's superpower um, so that I can focus on what it is that I do. And you are an amazing uh, guy. It's been great working with you. Um, and we have so much more still left to do. So I look forward to that journey with you as well. So for those that uh, have been with us uh, live, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, put them in the uh, chat right now before we go. If not, um, we do thank you for your time. Uh, as Gerald mentioned, he has a PDF that sort of summarizes all the things that he uh, gave. And so I will be sending that out in email as a link um, inside of the replay. So if you're not on my email list, you're going to want to get on my email list because I'll go out tomorrow morning. Today. Gerald, you know, um, some of the key takeaways that I took a, I took away from this conversation was certainly the six months I'm in savings. I, uh, I took away uh, the fact that savings is the killer, <laughs> right? We think that it's really the most powerful thing that we can be doing, but it really isn't. Investing is the thing that we need to be doing. And I know many of our uh, our community is full of travel professionals, right? And they were hit hard last year. Um, but I, but I, what I tell everyone, and I tell my clients particularly, is you know you have this opportunity in this recovery time to you know really think about what do you want to do because the bubble, the travel bubble, is going to burst wide open, and you're going to have more business than you can think of, right? Particularly if you follow some of the things that we talk about inside of our program. So money flowing is not going to be your issue. What you want to make sure is that it's flowing in the right direction so that it continues to flow, right? So it doesn't, uh, if something happens or some disruption happens that you're protected. And I love what you said about, it's not about uh, avoiding disaster or I don't remember the exact word, but learning how to surf the waves and that's sort of the thing that I want to be positioned to do is surf the waves because it's going to come, right? Shitty times are going to come. Things are going to come. A pandemic's going to come. Whatever's going to come. Things, you know, I mean, I, a lot of my clients have been uh, faced with medical issues, sickness. You know, we're all getting older. Just so many different things can come. And are you prepared to, to surf the wave, right? I'm, I'm going to use that statement again and again, <laughs> Gerald. I'm going to use that. Like, are you prepared to surf the wave? And the yeah. answer for me has always been no, I haven't, right? Luckily, I haven't had any major event happen, but now we are. We are ever more uh, prepared to surf the wave uh, uh, of a major event um, now because of you. And that we're going to be uh, working on getting uh, smaller <laughs> ways that, that come um, <laughs> so that we're prepared for those. So this is really beneficial to me. So I, there's some people who have said thank you in the comments. Um, and again, if you watch this in the replay, don't forget to push hashtag replay. Let us know that you're here. I will be sending out um, his PDF. Um, and Essence, she says, uh, so she's one of our uh, students and clients inside of the inner circle. Um, and she says that she's getting prepared as well. So. Gerald, do you have any final words for us? You know what? I will. The final word is to tell you guys this. Look, this is the most exciting time to be living in America. It is. And you guys as entrepreneurs, I promise you, you are on the cutting edge. We are flipping the entire works force dynamic on its head. And you guys are ahead of the curve. And it's you getting prepared is just going to build momentum. I'm, I'm excited for you. And Sunday, you are right, because I promise you, when everything open up, these people are going to stampede to these cruise ships <laughs> and these planes. I'm trying to get on one. I'm just <laughs> saying y'all have more money than y'all know what to do with. And if yeah. you put it in the right place, you'll be ahead 
head and shoulders above most marketplaces. Yeah. And then and that's the funny thing. I, I remember when I first started in the online business, Gerald, I remember I had, I don't remember if it was, I think it was a, um, a resource I had hired. And what she said to me is, is that, you know, your money comes in waves, like really big waves, right? Clients yeah. come in waves, your business comes in waves. So as you're ramping and you're starting up, things seem really slow, but you look up and you're like, oh shit, I've got like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've got, what, you've got these big waves of work that come to you. And so when it comes to money, you can easily look up and your money, you made all this money and it's gone. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it happens. Yeah. It, it's amazing. I mean, I tell people just my business. I was prepared to take a hit in 2020 and we expanded. Our company yeah. expanded by 37% because everybody looked up and said, wait a minute. I actually can make just as much money from home. Okay, I'm not going back to work. I'm not doing it. <laughs> I can run right a business from, from, right from right from this microphone. <laughs> yeah, I can run a business from a microphone in my laptop and not go back. Yes. So it came in waves like crazy. And that's the 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 huge thing is being prepared to actually convert that momentum. I have a good friend and a mentor that says when the wave hits you, whether it's money, whether it's business, whether it's trauma, whether it's disaster, mm -hmm. the secret is to actually not lean into it, but actually use the kinetic energy of whatever that is and just divert it into a produ productive way. And it took me a while to actually Understood. grasp yeah. that. But I was like, oh my gosh, that makes so much sense. Because yeah. when disaster happens in the country, I need to use that kinetic energy to boost my business. That's right. That's right. That I, I totally get that, like that kinetic energy, because I do think that it, it is because it is a wave. I mean, the pandemic, you could you could absolutely say people could say that that was a negative wave. But so many people have taken that opportunity um, and created a powerful wave of business for their businesses. Now, the travel industry you know, you could argue, well, there's nothing that you could have done to make that positive, but certainly use a lot of my clients use that time to really build up their knowledge base, get their systems mm -hmm. in place. So now they're not scrambling for clients. They already have their uh, processes in place and now they're just, uh, you know, <laughs> listening to the bling, right? <laughs> cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. <laughs> That's right. I literally, yeah. I literally have that sound on my phone every time I get a deposit. I need to change my, my ringtone. <laughs> it would be really nice to get every time you got a bling, right? <laughs> Gerald, this I'm, was great. I love you to death, man. Both Otis and I love you to death. And you, <laughs> I, I will be calling you after we move so that we can find, start up the new work that we talked about. So, um, again, everyone, thank you for joining us live. And those that do catch us in the replay, do not forget to push hashtag replay and let us know that we are here as the Sunday Gardener, your online travel boss. And we have had the pleasure of spending the last hour with Gerald Pimpleton. What is the name of your company again? It is the Pimpleton Agency. You can find it online. I promise you, if you type in that last name or anything like it, it'll be me. It'll be you. <laughs> I don't think I've ever met another Pimpleton too. So. Right. <laughs> Uh, Gerald, it was great talking to you. I'll talk to you later. All right. Have a great evening. All right. You have a good one.